All right, so we'll do a little bit of this chapter. I've got about an hour and a half to mess around anyways. Um, and I kind of don't want to sit around like for an excruciating amount of time waiting for BA. Uh, so we'll do a little bit of this chapter and we'll just continue it next time. They've been pretty long, so it'll probably be enough chapter for the next stream anyways. <clears throat> There we go. <clears throat> what snacks did I bring you? Uh, uh, I got an empty plastic bag on my desk that I guess we could all share. It had some Twizzlers in it, so it might have some flavor still. Who knows? Oh well. For the first time in almost four months, I felt like the whole world was twisting. Who was it? Who would change the world line? I didn't do anything. I hadn't interfered with the world. So why was the world doing this to me? I opened my eyes. Things had already taken on different colors. The world kept wavering until once again it became fixed to a single point in time. I wasn't looking at a warm, cheerful play, uh, party at the lab anymore. I was outside. It was raining. The rain was falling on my face and dropped so large that it hurt. It was a midwinter rain. It was freezing cold and I could feel it sapping the strength from my body. My view stopped twisting. I was staring at the broad back of a man I didn't know. I could hear the sound of many boots stamping through the mud, mingling with falling rain. The stench was terrible. The smell of sewage was so strong that it hurt to breathe. And it was mixed with the awful smell of burning rubber and plastic. Where was I? What was I doing right now? Things around me had changed so much. I tried to understand the situation I was in, but my brain was having an awful time keeping up. When I stopped, a rough hand patted me on the shoulder encouragingly. I looked around to see a man my age with a strong, powerful face. It was a face I'd never seen. I didn't know him, probably. The man was wearing the camo outfit and equipment I'd often seen in the self-defense force where or seen the self-defense force wear in the news. He was carrying an assault rifle on his shoulder. There were seven or eight people around me all dressed the same. They surrounded me in a circular formation and walked forward silently, as they kept a careful eye on the area around them. <laughs> And then I realized I was wearing the same camo uniform they were. I touched my bicep to check, but there was no muscle. It was flabby and weak. Unlike the others, I wasn't carrying any weapons. Then what was going on here? It felt like these seven or eight tough-looking SDF guys were all guarding me. Since when was I that important? Still confused, I dragged myself onward. Where was I anyways? It was a long path filled with dark brown mud. The walls formed a tall silhouette to the left and right. The path was filled with garbage and concrete rubble and sometimes we had to force our way past it. I looked up past the high walls. Despite the rain, the moon in the night sky was strangely red and a little too bright. It was thanks to that moon that we were able to walk down a path like this without flashlights. <gasps> sound. I heard a sound. It was the sound of water. I looked over and saw a hole opened up in one of the walls, 
filthy water was pouring out. The water formed dozens of little rivers that blocked our path. So that was it. This was the bottom of a river that had dried up. What looked like high walls were the river dikes. I turned toward the man who had spoken to me a bit ago and yelled so that my voice could be heard over the rain. But his words cut off there. Everyone seemed more tense than ever. One more of them grabbed me and pushed me toward the side of the riverbed. Everyone put their backs against the wall and held their breath. I could hear the sound of a helicopter's rotors in the distance. No, more than just one. They were getting closer. I had no idea what was going on, but I could feel my heart starting to beat faster. Past several meters of rubble lay an overturned car. It must have fallen into the riverbed after the water had disappeared. The entire body was bent inward, and the roof was completely crushed. I lay down in the stinking mud and slid into the shadow of the overturned car. At the same time, the SDF soldiers were issuing each other orders, as if this was something they planned already. Two of them stayed by my side and everyone else ran back the way that we'd come. They all climbed over uh, up crevices and outcroppings on the wall, then disappeared over the edge of the dike and out of my view shortly after. <laughs> Those were gunshots. And not just a single shot from a handgun or anything like that. That was the sound of war. I could hear the helicopters get further away, drawn by gunfire. <laughs> and this world line, was Japan at war? The Third World War. I remembered Suzuo's words. I happened to look inside the crushed car. I could see the corpses of a man, a woman, and a small child hanging upside down, still attached to their seat belts. They were all covered in dried black blood. They looked like mannequins at a bad haunted house. <laughs> And then I realized. I'd been so focused on moving forward that I hadn't noticed what they were, but I'd seen similar mannequins sunk in the mud. I could see their arms, the bones, and ragged muscle exposed to the air, reaching up to the skies if seeking salvation. I put my hand over my mouth to stifle a scream. Those weren't mannequins. He pulled me up. My knees were shaking from shock and exhaustion. The Soviet Union! Short for the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. A federal communist state founded in 1922. At the end of World War II, the Soviet Union engaged in the Cold War with America before dissolving in 1991. The state consisted of Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Moldova, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. I'm pretty sure those aren't real. My mind was dulled from the terror, but it seemed like something was off about what he's just said. Why? 
命を懸けて守れと自分は命じられていますそれがこの国の未来につながるのだと A helicopter passed over the riverbed. The bright searchlight passed by for a moment, but thankfully the shadow of the dike hit us. The young SDF soldier, whose name I didn't even know, pulled me inside one of the holes in the concrete. When I looked closely, I could see that it was the entrance to a sewer. It was just big enough for a single person to pass through. Struggling against the flow of water that came up to my knees, I pressed on through the darkness. My sense of smell had already gone numb, so I didn't have to worry about the stench of the sewage. Once inside, we came to several branching paths. The SDF soldiers seemed to know which one would lead where, and they marched on without hesitation. And then we came out of the sewer and back into a riverbed. It was dried up, just like the one we'd been through. I didn't know if it was the same river or another one, and the two soldiers didn't tell me. Either way, I was glad to finally be out of the foul smelling darkness, and I tried to take a deep breath to f and fill my lungs with fresh air. But. <gasps> Halfway through, I realized that the riverbed smelled even worse than the sewer. I took an involuntary step back and then another. The sight in front of me was just that terrible. What was once a riverbed was now filled with bodies. Some of them had been burnt totally black so that it was impossible to tell how much death lay before me. And in the distance, I could see what looked like bonfires. They were burning despite the rain. The fires were consuming the mountains of flesh that once were human bodies. The SDF soldier spoke to me. And then I came back to my senses. If it weren't for these two, I wouldn't have been able to stay sane. We ran through the riverbed, one of them in front of me, the other behind. I could hear the constant drone of the helicopters above me. Sometimes the searchlights got very close. Each time they did, I hid in the piles of bodies until they passed. I'd seen this many times before as I wandered through the world lines. I'd seen death. I'd seen the moments when people had died. But at the same time, I'd never experienced what happened to a dead person after they were left out for a long time. More than fear, more than sorrow, the thing that hit me first was the smell of death. The rotting stench ate away at my body, not my soul. My whole body was rejecting it. It made me feel sick. Thinking that way meant trampling on the dignity of the dead, but I couldn't help it. The Valley of Hinnom. I remembered that phrase. That was what the strange attacker had said that night, when they came after Dr. Leskinen, Maho, and me. That valley was the origin of the word Gehenna, meaning hell. It was said that flames burned there every night, scorching the heavens themselves. Those who died merciless deaths with uh, anger or misery in their hearts were flung into the flames, their souls becoming black smoke that rained hatred down on the land. What I stared at now was Gehenna. The two soldiers led me to a half-collapsed subway tunnel. The lights were all off because there was no electricity, but there were three armored cars in camo colors, and their headlights on, uh, and with their headlights on to illuminate the way. They were four-wheel drive, off-road vehicles covered in thick chunks of armor, but I didn't see any real weapons. 
ここから地下鉄内を通って埼玉へ抜けられます入間基地はまだ無事と聞いていますそこまで行けば関東を脱出できるはずです Uh, Iruma Air Base, one of the、uh, Japan Air Self Defense Forces, JASDF, largest bases, located between the cities of Iruma and Sayama in Saitama Prefecture. The base is home to 18 units and approximately 4,300 personnel. It is also the location of Central Air Defense Force headquarters. Kanto, Dust? Anashiwa Muko de Kite Grasai. There were a lot of things I wanted to ask, but even as we spoke, I heard what sounded like gunshots outside the tunnel. The men forced me into the back seat of one of the cars. So, I'm going to go to the back seat of the car. I'm going to go to the back seat of the car. I'm going to go to the b a c The two soldiers who had brought me here saluted, then turned around and left the station. I felt like I was never going to see them again. The door of the armored car slammed shut with a heavy thud. The car's crew were SDF soldiers, just a little older than me. The diesel engine kicked to life and the car raced down a tunnel that had originally been designed for trains. Of course, it wasn't a pleasant ride at all, but I didn't have any choice. There was no way I could tell them I wanted to go to Akihabara. There was no way to alter the world line. I had to survive in this hellish world. And to survive, I needed to do what they said. My wants didn't matter at all. I wasn't even allowed to express them. I just did as they told me and ran. It was all I could do. But I had no idea that it would take me an entire month. Anonymous at Security Council. The story so far the USSR starts、uh, experimenting with a time machine and America goes apeshit. Give me that time machine, USSR, but I refuse. Eastern powers and Soviets get cocky. How's it feel to be you right now, huh? How's it feel? This brings us to the end of your regularly scheduled Quotal Roar. USA, I'm gonna bomb you from Japan, lol, 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 lol. USSR. Then we'll invade Japan. US, oh shit, right now.、Uh, USSR is kicking ass. Hokkaido and Northeast Japan are screwed. They're coming for Central Japan now? People of Nagoya, GTFO,、uh, Captain Bajina. Amateurs who don't know nothing about strategy need to shut the fuck up. The SDF may look like they're retreating, but they've actually got a defense line at Mount Fuji. They're about to start a counterattack. The Mount Fuji line, l a m a u Who the hell's dumb enough to believe Japanese Imperial High Command? Raffle?、Uh, NSCJ. We better not start hearing calls for kamikaze pilots soon. Captain Bajina. Shut up, noob. It is like you're the, the real threat to Japan. Anonymous. Wait, what the hell happened to the collective right of self defense? America's only interest in protecting Okinawa. So, what the hell's the SDF doing getting sent off to Siberia? How are they supposed to protect the country? Anonymous. You protect it, Chicken Hawk. You want to fight? Go volunteer. They say they aren't even enough recruits. Anonymous. Are they, going to,、uh, are they going to start conscription soon, you think? Captain Bajina. What's the point of conscripting a bunch of fat otaku? <laughs> They just get in the way. War these days requires professional soldiers. Anonymous. Says the fat otaku who doesn't want to go to war. Anonymous. There are barely any professional soldiers left in Japan. Our masters in America sent them all around the globe and then stuck them there. 
You guys will probably be getting your conscription notices soon. Good luck. I'm a chick, so I don't care. Anonymous. In other words, if we get a sex change, we don't have to go, right? Captain Bajina. The real enemies of Japan are its own citizens, huh, asshole? Anonymous. So seriously, are we going to be split up like Germany? NC NSCJ. It's likely. They say that there's a provisional government forming in Okinawa. They all set to abandon East Japan and just have America protect the West. Those incompetents in the government might honestly do it. Captain Bajina. Is it really the time to patch politicians? Traitorous shill? Anonymous. Traitor. Lol. Shill. Lol. Lol. Captain Bajina. Strategically, America can't let go of Okinawa, and Japan wants to keep some kind of government. That means that making provisional government in Okinawa is the best option. NC... NSCJ. You bashed the hell out of Okinawa up until now, and now you're telling me this? Captain Bajina. Shut up, traitor. NSCJ. So if I'm a traitor, what are you? If you're posting on at channel right now, that means you either fled the country or ran to Okinawa. Anonymous. Is this today's you don't get to talk thread? <laughs> Lol. Tell me about Lol. Uh, net slang, short for laugh out loud. By inserting Lol into the middle of the end of a sentence, the speaker can convey that they find the situation humorous. On message boards, typing them out in succession, lol, 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 allows users to strengthen the expression or to indicate that they're mocking another user. For example, ha ha ha, lol, 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 sure, lol, 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 lol. KK, net slang, short for okay. <laughs> <clears throat> the reason it took a month to get to Okinawa was, was that we were losing the war. Supposedly, the plan had been to ferry me by plane to Okinawa, once we'd arrived at Aruma base. But the constant bombing had slowed us down, so they gave up on the plane and decided to escape by Kyushu, or to escape Kyushu by ground. There was more than one attack by Soviet spies and assault teams. Some of the SDF soldiers protecting me died. But when I got to Sasebo, I was able to get on a maritime SDF escort ship and managed to escape to Okinawa. Why were they all doing this for me? No matter how many times I asked, no one would answer. Okinawa in winter was covered in thick clouds. Come to think of it, I hadn't seen a real break in the clouds for a whole month. I was thinking about that when I was loaded into a van with dark tinted windows that had come to pick me up from the port. Inside the car was not only the driver, but a middle-aged man sitting in fr the front passenger seat. He was very short, perhaps only around 150 centimeters tall. But he had the air of a military veteran, and even though he was fully dressed, I could tell that he was extremely muscular. Uh, ministry of Defense. One of the central ministries of Japan, it manages and operates the self-defense forces. In 2007, it changed its name from the Defense Agency to the Ministry of Defense. Nagatabi的疲れているところを申し訳ないが、もうしばらく我慢してくれ。all right, just another month more. One of the eight regional defense bureaus of the Ministry of Defense in Japan, it serves as the center of defense administration in the Okinawa Prefecture. Hi. I'd heard that Tokyo had been destroyed. The major functions of Japanese government were now headquartered out of the Okinawa Defense Bureau. It allow for better cooperation with the American forces stationed nearby. Or sorry, to allow. <laughs> that's why uh that's what Shimoyama explained to me. 
In other words, the place I was heading to was the core of Japan's defenses. Once I arrived, would I understand why I was so important uh, that all those soldiers were willing to die to protect me? The car stopped in front of Naha Airport for a while. Uh, an airport located in Naha, Okinawa Prefecture. It's the hub airport of the Okinawa area and home to the Naha Air Base, one of the Japan Air Self-Defense Force's air bases. As of 20, uh, 2009, it was the sixth busiest airport in Japan, as measured by a number of passengers. Uh, the car stopped in front of Naha Airport, and then I saw a surprising pair get aboard. I wasn't expecting to see them there. But they were the first people I knew who I'd met since coming to this world line. That alone was enough to make me cry. But still, I couldn't just sit there and be happy. Yuki nodded as if trying to make me feel better. ルミホちゃんでしょ。ルカ君、楓ちゃん。今朝空港に着いて、みんな防衛局というところで保護してもらえると言うので待っていたんですが、さっき急に私と吹木ちゃんだけ先に連れて行くと言われて、それでこの車
投下管制と午後5時以降の外出禁止令が出ているんだ沖縄なら安全とは言ってもね戦時下なんだよ以前のようにはいかない早く戦争など終わって元に戻ってほしいものだ<笑> More time, huh? なあ岡部君君の知っている沖縄は夜遅くまでもっと明るくて楽しい場所だったろあどうでしょう俺は沖縄は初めてなのでそれはもったいないななら次は楽しい旅行で来られることを祈っているよここは本当にいい島だ The car headed up from the bypass over a land bridge and then to another road. We quickly came to a long tunnel. Jitsua, Sanin in Boe Kokonitskuma in Skoshidaki Stumo Stakutena. Sorry, the coast de dojo ste morata. My guess was right. That meant that there was something he wanted to ask just the three of us. Why us three? I wasn't particularly close to Yuki or Fubuki. I only even started talking to them a few months ago. And then I shook my head. That was before the world line changed. Maybe things were different on this world line. I had no idea what my relationship was to anyone else in this world line. Since the SDF had been treating me so well, I didn't want to make Shimoyama suspicious. I decided it would be best to leave most of the talking to Yuki and Fubuki. Amane Yuki san. Hi. Shimoyama spoke to Yuki first. Yuki went stiff when her name was called. I could feel it even sitting next to her. Kimi wa Hashida Itaru kun to sono imoto san ga doko ni iru ka shiranai daro ka. Little sister. That must be Suzuha. That would mean that everyone in this world, uh, that would mean that even in this world line, Suzuha had come from the future and gotten to know Yuki and the others while pretending to be Daru's sister. And the STF evidently didn't know where Daru and Suzuha were. <laughs> Yuki fell silent and glanced over to me, as if expecting help. But I didn't know where they were either. I didn't even have any memories of this world line, so I had no way of answering. But Yuki's attitude bothered me. It was as if she knew where they were and was deliberately hiding it, and that I was supposed to be hiding it too. I could figure that out, and I'm sure Shimoyama could too. A strange tension filled the car. Yuki was trying to hide it. From whom? Hmm? I don't know. Shimoyama turned around from the front passenger seat and asked again. Yuki bowed her head in apology. でも、本当に何も妹さんからもはい時に岡部君は橋田君と何か研究をしていたらしいねえ I wasn't sure how to react when the conversation suddenly turned toward me Researching Researching what? Uh oh, if I panic, I'll make them suspicious. I would just have to give him the most harmless answers I could. CCD camera. A camera that uses a semiconductor device known as a CCD charge coupled device. 
However, in general conversation, the term is sometimes used to refer to any extremely small camera. What's happened so far? Uh, World War III, and we had the Christmas party. But World War III mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, thank you, Sarah. Hold on, let me check the time real quick to make sure I'm still good. Yeah, I'm super good. Damn, I responded. That was a mistake. But did that mean that Daru and Suzo were hiding from the SDF amidst all the chaos? The SDF had risked their lives to protect me over the past month. Shouldn't I be asking them for help? I got even more confused. <laughs> Somebody, please tell me what the right answer is. How am I supposed to respond here? This time it was Fubuki's turn to jump up in her seat. Or so Shimoyama said, but Fubuki was clearly starting to get scared. Her reaction was strange. It was too strong. Maybe the self-defense force wasn't simply protecting us. For one thing, there was no uh, way normal civilians like us merited such important treatment. But then, what were they after? No, I could guess. The time machine. This war started with Russia's time machine experiments. And of course, Nakabachi was involved. I learned from some of the soldiers that even in this world line, he'd sought asylum in Russia. And Suzuha was a time traveler from the year 2036. If Suzuha was here in this era, that meant that it was Daru who made the time machine that brought her here. If you had a time machine, you could change the outcome of this war. It would make sense if that's what Japanese or if that's what the Japanese government thought, and if that's what they were trying to cat or that's why they were trying to capture Suzuha and her friends. Once I realized that, the whole situation started to feel terrifying to me. Was this car really headed toward Okinawa Defense Bureau? And if it was, were they really going to keep us safe there? ただ、ストレスがひどいようだね。あ。まあ、無理もない。あれだけひどい空襲をくぐり抜けてきたんだ。今やほとんどの民間人にPTSDがあると言ってもいい。I feel like I've done PTSD before in the same game. <laughs> but maybe not. Short for post traumatic stress disorder from the DSM uh 4 Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders 4th edition published by the American Psychiatric Association in 1994. A mental condition caused by the severe psychological shock of an accident, disaster, crime, or other intense stressor. It induces several stress-related symptoms, including emotional instability, insomnia, confusion, and vivid flashbacks. These symptoms are often triggered in response to stimulus that is similar to the original trauma. A patient must experience these symptoms for over a month in order to be diagnosed with PTSD. <laughs> ただ君の場合、他の人とは少し違うようだ。随分とリアルな夢を見たりするとか。ひどい時には白チームというのかな。現実と夢の区別がつかなくなることもあると聞いた。だから、それがPTSDってことじゃないんですか。Fubuki was too scared to speak, so Yuki interrupted curtly. It was rare to see Yuki act like this. If nothing else, I'd never seen it before. 
it was plain now. Yuki didn't trust Shimoyama. In fact, she considered him an enemy. Yeah. Shimoyama paused for uh paused a moment for effect, then rubbed his chin. なかせさんと非常によく似た白昼夢を見る人たちがいる。しかも一人や二人じゃない。もちろん程度の差はあるが、国内だけでもすでに十数名ほど見つかっている。どうやら海外にもいるようだ。まあ、西側諸国の情報
perestroika. Russian for restructuring, a policy of economic reform via the introduction of market-oriented economics implemented in Soviet Union in 1985. It was originally intended to revive the stalled socialist economy, but it ultimately led to the collapse of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union's one-party state, as well as the uh, dissolving of the USSR. Uh, a wall that divided Berlin, the capital of Germany. After World War II, Berlin was divided into two sides. The eastern side, which was controlled by the Soviet Union, and the western side, which was controlled by America, England, and France. Soon after, Germany would split itself into West Germany and East Germany. The portions of Berlin and East Germany remained its capital, but West Berlin remained occupied by the Allied powers, while also being cut off from the rest of West Germany, which lay approximately 100 miles to the west. In 1961, East Germany built a wall around the city in response to continuing attempts by its citizens to seek asylum in West Berlin. This was the Berlin Wall. Uh, from the day of its establishment to the day of its destruction in 1989, the Berlin Wall served as a symbol of the Cold War, as well as the physical and ideological divide between East and West Germany. Additionally, West Berlin was never officially uh, West Germany territory. They simply operated as a stand-in for foreign affairs and currency administration. Hi. That's the The second after the words uh, were out of my mouth, an alarm went off in my mind. Something was wrong. There was something strange about what Shimoyama was saying. And then I realized. East and West were caught up in the middle of a world war. How could the Berlin Wall have fallen? And how could Gorbachev really execute Perestroika? By the time I realized he tricked me, it was too late. My panic appeared on my face. Hmm? <笑><笑>なあ、岡部君、教えてほしいんだが。<笑> Shimuyama suddenly laughed. It was a bitter laugh, almost eerily so. Goribachov? Lelitsin? Kimi tachi ga kuchi ni suru sore wa... Ittai dare nan da? Ware ware wa mochiron... Amerika no arayiru jouho kikan ni mo... Sonna jinbuts no data wa sonzai shinai nda. Doesn't exist. I looked over at Yuki. Oh. From the look on her face, I could tell that she was, really had no idea who they were. But I couldn't answer. I was thinking of something completely different. I suddenly realized why the world line might have changed a month ago on Christmas Eve. What if Russia used the time machine that day in an experiment to change the past? The goal of the experiment would have been to stop the collapse of the Soviet Union. And if the result of their changing the past was this world line... How foolish. A single change to the past and the butterfly effect makes the entire world so different. Butterfly effect? A part of chaos theory that states if a butterfly flaps its wings in Beijing, a storm will occur in New York. Essentially, this means that even a small change in the initial conditions can lead to a drastically different result. Chaos theory states that even if something can be expressed with a simple formula, it's difficult to perfectly predict its outcome. However, this doesn't mean that the result is random. It means that the slightest variation in initial conditions can cause a widely diverging outcome. This theory only applies to long-term predictions. Did they know how many people had died? He was about to push me farther when... We heard the sound of an incoming call on a cell phone.
Shimoyama grunted and took his phone out of his pocket. Shimoyama da. Ah, ima bowie kyoku e. Nani? Douyu koto da, sore wa. Kisa, kore da kara baka dom wa. Aitsu ra doko no kuni no seiji ka da. Shimoyama's finger slammed down on the uh, end call button so hard I thought the phone would break. There was a look of rage on his face. Kadena Base. An, Amer uh, an American Air Force base located in Okinawa Prefecture. It has twice the area of the Haneda Airport, also known as the Tokyo International Airport. His words were filled with a rash, uh, with irritation, sorry, as he spoke to the driver. Changing destinations. Who was he just talking to? As I sat there confused, Shimoyama started to call someone else. Shimoyama, that was all he said before he hung up. どういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうことですかどういうこと
My childhood friend flung herself into my arms and I held her tight. I could feel her warmth. Mayuri was here. I never got, uh, I'd never gone, yeah, never gone almost a whole month without seeing her before. And this was wartime. I couldn't easily contact her like I could in the old world line. So I'd been so worried about whether or not Mayuri was okay. It was no exaggeration to say that I'd survived this far just to make sure. I had erased the entire Alpha world line to save her. No matter what happened, I wanted her to be safe. I held her too closely. I took a step back. I hope she has cat ears on her fatigues, otherwise I'm gonna be really sad. Fucked up. <laughs> I heard two more voices I recognized. Ferris and Luca. Behind them I saw Kaede. I felt myself getting choked up too when I saw Lukaku cry. I exchanged greetings with Kaede, and Fubuki uh, had grabbed onto her like a little kid. She was still pale and trembling. <laughs> Fairy spoke sadly. Then she put her hand around my neck and held me close. Her little pink lips got close to my ear as if she was about to kiss me. What was going on? She laughed mischievously. Then Ferris, no, Akiha Rumiho, whispered into my ear while pretending to kiss me. That's right, Ferris had a special talent. Cheshire Break. Uh, Cheshire Cat. A fictional cat from Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. She was so incredibly good at looking into someone's heart and seeing what they were thinking. Oh. One of them just tricked me. Ferris looked surprised and took a step back. So <laughs> And then I heard the sound of another engine. This time it was coming from beyond the gate, inside the base. It belonged to a black luxury car with an E on the license plate. Behind it was a minibus. The two of them stopped in front of the gate. It was time for my reunion to end. Welcome! <laughs> An American soldier as tall as a basketball player got out of the car. Hamond. His Japanese was good, but not great. He was smiling, but I could tell he wasn't going to allow any arguments. And the other American soldiers were still carrying their rifles as they stood guard without smiles. Shimoyama and the other Japanese soldiers were watching us from a distance. They didn't try to stop us. They were just looking downward. <laughs> oh. 
がらなくていいです。皆さんには少し話を聞かせてもらいます。でも後ですぐに沖縄防衛局へ送ります。さあ、どうぞ。ほかに大丈夫だ。安心しろ。でも。ゆきさん、参りを頼みます。Hi. Yuki nodded and put her arm around Mayuri's shoulder as she led her to the bus. Everyone else followed. Once everyone but me was on, the minibus left immediately. The area in front of the gate fell silent. It was hard to believe that this existed in the same world line as all the places I'd crossed on my escape through Japan's main island. He told me to get in the back seat of a black luxury car. What would happen to me once I got inside? I tried to think about it but realized there was nothing I could do. I was just about to get into the car when. Shimoyama's scream was cut off by the sound of gunfire. In the corner of my eye, I saw the American soldiers firing without hesitation. No way. I tried to turn around when. A large hand blocked my vision as Hammond held me down. I couldn't hear Shimoyama's voice anymore. Through the gaps between his fingers, I could see that nothing was moving. And I knew exactly what that meant. I was shoved into the car before I had time to think about it. I tried to open my mouth, but Hammond looked into my eyes and shook his head. I wasn't supposed to talk then. Hammond sat next to me, then closed the door. The car started to move. Soon we turned down a different road than the one the minibus was taking. America, huh? I'd never been there before. What were they going to do to me there? Use me as a guinea pig? Cut open my head and dissect my brain? I probably wasn't going to be able to do any tourist things. I felt like screaming, but tried my best to stay calm. Hammond suddenly spoke, then he handed me something. I took it before I even looked at what it was. When I checked, it was a normal smartphone. <laughs> Confused, I pressed the button as I was told. And then something appeared on the screen. It was the Amadeus Makise Kurisu. I was about to ask Hammond when, for the first time in about a month, that feeling came back. The whole world and all of its colors began to shift. There was a feeling of instability, like my brain was unable to recognize where it was. And then dizziness and a sense of falling, like you get when you're anemic. I could hear the blood vessels deep within my ears, and they sounded really loud. The sense of floating finally stopped, and my surroundings coalesced into firm shapes. <gasps> my Yuri was in front of me. And we missed like a month. <laughs> no more Christmas party. <laughs> I 
I was in the lab, in the room I knew well. There was no trace of Okinawa anywhere. I realized that it was staring at my Yuri. I looked around the room. Daru was sitting in front of the PC like always, hunched over with his back towards me. Suzuha was reading a magazine on the couch. On the open page, I could read the title, New Encephalitis Strikes Worldwide. Are you in danger? The same couch, the same cheap fridge, Daru's computer desk, the dirty curtain that cut off the development room from the rest of the lab. The wall clock, which I picked up at, uh, out of a garbage dump, told me it was past six. I looked at the calendar, and 2010 was already gone. It was January 2011. The world line had changed again. I was back? To the old world line. No. Mayuri. Kokote. Akihabara deona. Chigo. No. Akihabara deo. Kyote. Nanichidake. Onto. ゴリバチョフ知ってるかゴリバチョフどこかで聞いたことがあるようなペレストロイカ州恐ろしいやあでもゴリビってソ連時代だっけ やっぱロシアといえばプーシン州目の前で睨まれてるションベンチビル地震あるねプーシンさんなら知ってるよロシアの大統領さんだよね実はワンコが好きなんだよ秋竹を飼ってるんだってニュースでやってた大統領 my Yuri, Daru, and Suzuma all looked over at me suspiciously. It felt like a long time since anyone had looked at me that way. I was back. I no longer had to worry that I might be killed at any second. I felt incredibly relieved. But at the same time, I wondered... Why had the world line changed again? I needed to calm down and think for a bit. I went up to the roof and booted up the web browser on my smartphone. Unlike during wartime, it connected immediately. I was amazed at the speed. Just getting an internet connection in the last world line had been difficult enough. I started by searching for Golbachev, and the results came back instantly. Perestroika, the Soviet Union's first and last president. The August uh, coup d'etat and the collapse of the Soviet Union. All the keywords I hoped to see were there. As soon as I confirmed that the Soviet Union was dismantled at the end of the 20th century and no longer existed, I closed the browser. <sighs> Then, why had the world line shifted again? I hadn't done anything. I didn't have any way of affecting the divergence value. So what had changed it? Had whoever, ha, uh, had whoever had performed the first experiment in Russia undone it? Had they watched its progress for a month and then been satisfied? Were they going to keep doing it? And if they did, would I be caught up in it each time? Some... It was a mistake to come outside without a coat on. 
nothing I could come up with by myself would be any more, uh, anything more than a guess. I went back to the lab. The wreaths we put up at the entrance for the Christmas party were still up. Christmas party. Go. It had only been a month, hadn't it? It felt like a million years ago. I had no memories of what I'd done uh, in this world line after the Christmas party. Oh, so was that when the world line changed? Everyone remembered that I had collapsed at the Christmas party, which means I'd come back to the same world line as the one I'd been in before. If this was Russia's doing, it was a terrifying thing. Uh, it was terrifying to think that they could control the world line to that degree. And there was one more thing. It worried me that Fubuki had collapsed too. I stood there lost in thought. Daru and Mayuri looked a little concerned. Oh, 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 I quickly came up with an excuse. I've heard that lately, unless you were really, really sick, they wouldn't let you stay in the hospital for very long. Was Fubuki sick with something? Suzuo whispered as she held up the page of the magazine she was reading. New encephalitis strikes worldwide. Are you in danger? I borrowed the magazine. They were talking about this last November. I'd seen a glimpse of it in the news. Outside of Japan, they'd seen almost 100 people, albeit with mild symptoms. In Japan, there were 10 people being kept at hospitals for examinations, or so it said. So it made its way to Japan. And one of those 10 was Fubuki then. Was it transmissible by air? We didn't catch it at the Christmas party, did we? I knew that getting nervous wouldn't help anything, but still, I wondered. I gave a half-hearted answer to my Yuri and turned back to the magazine. Strange symptoms being found all over the world. Cause unknown. Sudden memory loss. Memories differ from those from the people around you. Losing all sense of passage of time. Losing the ability to tell the difference between dreams and reality. Sometimes having waking dreams. The article was filled with things like that. This was like... And it matched exactly with what Shimoyama had told me in the other world line. ずいぶんとリアルな夢を見たりするとか。ひどい時には白昼夢と夢の区別がつかなくなることもあると聞いた。中瀬君と非常によく似た白昼夢を見る人たちがいる。しかも一人や二人じゃない。I'd wondered back then if Fubuki possessed Reading Steiner too. 
Maybe the reason she collapsed at the Christmas party wasn't some new disease, but the unexpected activation of reading Steiner. That would mean that her diagnosis was wrong. The unnecessary tests and treatments they gave her wouldn't help a bit. It looked like it needed to talk to Fubuki. What time is it? 12.50. Let me check my timer real quick. I think this would probably be the best place to wrap up for now. Um, like I said before, I've got a thing that I want to try to do. It's in a short time frame and then like the next 30 minutes. So I kind of want to be around for it. So I'm going to wrap up uh, Steins Gate Zero for now. So thank you so much for being here. Um, hopefully next time we get some more information. Uh, <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be a very long game because uh, we are barely down the first route. So there's a lot, a lot more to look forward to. I'll be back. Uh, see you in a few. I'm going to take a quick break and then I guess it's Final Fantasy for a little bit. Be right back.